Hello, friends, and welcome to Wonderland. My name is Allison, the self-proclaimed priestess of Wonderland. And if you are new here and you're interested in learning about how the specifically the moon and astrology can affect you on a day-to-day -day basis, I upload these weekly moon update videos once a week, every Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This gives you an opportunity to sit with your planner or your journal and kind of check out the week ahead and see how it might be affecting you and how you might want to plan your week accordingly. So just when you thought that you were kind of getting your stride back after the solar eclipse, we've got the lunar eclipse coming up this week. And uh, that's going to be the main focus of this uh, of this video. I don't think that uh, we have at the time of filming this, I don't have any community events planned. Uh, but it's the weekend before Halloween. I'm sure everybody has a lot going on. And the energy is going to be <laughs> a little bit crazy um, and emotional to say the least. So I will be uploading a separate lunar eclipse video along with a collective tarot reading for everybody who's interested. Uh, so we're mostly going to talk about the moon energy for this week, as well as like just kind of a brief description about what we can expect about the eclipse because I will have that other lunar eclipse video separate. So let's jump into it. I hope you're ready. <laughs> Okay, so the energy of this week overall has this very kind of slow and gradual crescendo to it. Like, not not so much as the, the full moon last month with the Aries felt like this big, like we were climbing up the hill of a big roller coaster, and then we like plummeted down the other side. This feels more like, like, this feels more like a river. We're like just being pulled downstream. And I think depending on how you react to things or how your birth chart is going to interact with these energies is going to determine the speed and flow of which your river is going. Because it just has this like pull and this drag leading up to the Taurus energy. And all of that is going to start here on Monday. I think Aquarius being an air sign and Aquarius helping us come up with innovative ways of doing things, I think just gives us this opportunity to like, okay, how am I going to approach this week? And I think that's going to be different for everybody. I think maybe those who have very prominent Aquarius, Pisces, Aries and Taurus signs might feel the effects of the moon a little bit more prominent um, simply because just like, for example, my rising sign is Pisces. I really love Pisces moon days. I usually feel uh, very, very much like myself because your rising sign is kind of like your, your inner, your true, your authentic self. Whereas your sun sign is who it's like it's like how you project yourself into the world um so i just really i usually have a really great day when the moon is in in pisces um so hopefully for me this little lazy lazy river it might be more of like a lazy river for me I'm, i can just get in my inner tube and like float towards float towards whatever <laughs> whatever's going to come up for me People with Aries signs might be just feeling more energized and like more pumped and more motivated. 
so anyways, back to Monday. Use this, I, I think, use Monday to see, like, how does it feel to you? How do these, how do you relate to these signs? How do you relate to Taurus energy? Um, how do you, what are the things in, that you need in place when you're feeling emotional? The positive things in place. Like if you know that when you're getting an, an emotional about something that you're going to lash out on people that don't deserve it, then, and then use whatever coping mechanisms work for you so that you're not lashing out at people, whether that's breath work, meditation, taking it easy, biting your tongue, taking a deep breath before you react to something. Um, if, if you're somebody who, personally for me, when I'm feeling emotional, I try to stuff those emotions with, with junk food and candy, and uh, then I feel like crap and my health isn't good. So I know that for this week, I need to have healthy snacks readily available so that if I get that urge to like pleasure seek through comfort food, that hopefully I have an, a healthier option available for me. So I think that like take Monday, take if, if this is, if you're watching this live Sunday night, start thinking about these things. What are the things that I need in place so that if I'm feeling overly emotional, that I don't react negatively to something. And I think that's uh, going to be really important to do on Monday because Pisces is a water sign. Pisces is, uh, I don't know. I think everybody feels different about the water signs. I feel like Cancer might be a little bit more emotional. Just having a Pisces rising, like my Pisces energy is more like spacey, dreamy. It's, I mean, yes, I am a very emotional and a very sensitive person, but it just doesn't, it doesn't react emotional to me. It's more of a daydreamy kind of energy for me. But like I said, and the whole point of this planner is to figure out how you react to these different energies in the sky. Because that's the whole point to following the moon is to see, okay, how, how can I work with this energy? So for me personally, I might just plan some creative projects on Tuesday and Wednesday, or I might film some pick a card readings on Tuesday and Wednesday to connect to my intuition. I might uh, make sure that I'm taking time in the evening to do my own journaling and to maybe do an, an extra long meditation. And I also know that on Pisces days that I'm not really good at doing uh, little mundane tasks, like um, anything that has to do with like budgeting or finances or paying bills or um, even kind of grocery shopping, because I'll, I'll start to be like, oh, I, I want to make this, I want to bake a cake and it's going to be so beautiful. Like I just start to get to a little bit too imaginative and too dreamy. And then I'm like, oh, I bought all these cake ingredients and I don't have the energy to <laughs> bake the cake or I don't want to turn the oven on because it's too hot inside. Um, these are just <laughs> things that I think about on a week like this so that I'm just like, OK, so planning, I'm going to like plan. These are going to be my filming days. This is going to be my if I have any like bookkeeping I need to do, if I have any like phone call, like difficult phone calls, any business decisions. I'm probably going to use the air sign so that I can use my brain. And then on Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm going to be doing either something creative or something intuitive. And then really in the early in the morning, Thursday, so 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, this energy so close to the full moon. This is like a waxing gibbous moon that's almost full. So this might be the the time to get all of those like, like, uh, whatever, t whatever takes more energy for you. Like, if you have to go run a million errands, schedule, schedule all your meetings on this day, schedules things that you need, you need to have energy, you need to be social on Thursdays and Fridays, because this is fire, this is action, this is starting new things. And we'll be in this energy Thursday and Friday. And then we won't actually transition into the Taurus energy until almost 8 o'clock a.m. on Saturday. And then Saturday afternoon around 2 o'clock is when the moon is going to be new at 1.54 p.m. 
and then the eclipse is going to happen at 2 p.m. for those of us on the East Coast. So um, those of us in the U.S., we, we won't actually be able to see the lunar eclipse because full moon does not rise until after sunset. So that's why we see a full moon directly overhead um, around usually where, where I am. A full moon is usually around like nine or 10 o'clock um, to be almost directly above me. So I'm able to see it no matter where I am. So because the eclipse is happening at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are not going to uh, be able to witness it. Hopefully, maybe we can find um, a live feed of it online. But you're still it like you're still going to feel that energy like it's still it's still happening, even if you're not visibly able to see it. These are the different aspects on the full moon to the moon. So the moon is going to be squaring Pluto opposing the sun like it always is and uh during a full moon and sextiling pisces or sextiling saturn and conjuncting the north node in aries so basically both of these aspects bring up deep emotions and can raise conflict within relationships because when your emotions are high that's when you say things that you don't mean it's when you lash out when when you're just you're just taking like you're just overly emotional so whatever that's why i'm saying whatever coping mechanisms that you usually have in place to calm yourself down in the moment so that you're not saying things that you don't mean is is going to be very helpful in thinking about that now so that when you're in the moment that might be a little bit volatile then you're not overreacting and saying things that you don't mean so the positive aspect here is sextiling saturn so saturn moved into pisces earlier this year and i've talked about this a lot but just in case you haven't seen my videos the transition from saturn to a water sign has really put emphasis for me cleansing with water that means drinking extra water using a a smudge spray actually taking a bath or using a shower to energetically cleanse your system. There's just something about the these Saturn and Pisces, Saturn in a water sign that is really it's really beneficial to clear energy with water. Now, this doesn't mean you have to do that. It's just I'm just saying this that I've really noticed this difference where I used to be someone that smudged all the time when Saturn Saturn was in Aquarius an air sign. I've just noticed that like, oh, water is working better. But it all depends. Whatever your whatever your go-to cl energetic cleansing method is, whether that's carrying crystals, using smoke cleanse, putting your feet on the ground, getting yourself grounded and centered, using breath work, whatever it is that you usually do, just use that. Whatever works best for you is good. The moon sextiling Saturn gives us emotional stability not only because of that aspect but because Taurus is really stable and and Pisces needs that grounded stability to bring those dreams into reality to bring the the psychic intuitive information into the physical Taurus earthy plane so this is a really a really beautiful really beautiful aspect um so I really wanted to bring that up as well as conjuncting the Aries north node gives us an opportunity to weigh clear clear path for your purpose. I do also kind of feel like this might be in relation to the Aries full moon that we had last month that gave us this opportunity to just burn away all of that unwanted stuff so that we can see things clearly and like get on the path and stay on the path. The reason I bring those up is because if things get emotional and volatile, have that be something that you can like grab onto, hold onto and be like, okay, this, this obstacle that I'm going through right now is giving me an opportunity to uh, move this thing out of the way so that I can continue on my path. Just know that whatever obstacle, conflicts, lesson, confrontation is teaching you something, it's giving you an opportunity. So try to focus on that instead of spiraling and thinking like, oh God, why is this, why is this happening to me? Or blowing things out of proportion or reacting and overreacting and, and saying things that you don't mean to say. We're transitioning. It will be in the Taurus energy for Saturday and Sunday. And then we transition to Gemini on on Monday. So we'll start the, the week off on Monday with Gemini energy. But if any, anything, any work that you want to do on the solar eclipse, if you want to spend time 
uh, creating and decorating your Samhain altar, creating a full moon altar, or doing your tarot reading that's in the planner, uh, Saturday and Sunday would be good days to do that because we're still in that Taurus energy. So to recap this week, air on Monday. That helps us get our head straight <laughs> to prepare for the week. Tuesday, we have water. That's hopefully going to get us in the flow, connect to your intuition, see if anything comes up for you so that you have a better direction for how you want to approach the rest of the week or approach the full moon. Then on Thursday, we have fire. This is hopefully going to, we can, we can use fire to burn things away. We can use fire to take action on things. And then the full moon is going to be in earth. And that does give us this grounded stability to hold on to, to anchor us if things feel chaotic or turbulent. And speaking of anchoring in, getting rooted and grounded in the Taurus Earth energy, our chakra card for the week is a root chakra card, anchor in now. You are present, strong, and worthy, capable of creating harmonious, the harmonious and beautiful life that you desire. Hold still in this wisdom the knowledge that you are safe and stable, the awareness that Mother Earth is guiding and protecting you every step of the way. Your path in this moment was both guided and intended. The crystal they recommend is black tourmaline and the herb is burdock. Again, this is a root chakra card. Uh, black tourmaline is really good for grounding, stabilizing, cleansing, and also protecting your aura and also healing any rips or tears that you might have in your aura. So I chose to work with the Healing Spirits Oracle deck, but then I also felt called to put pull another card because um, the descriptions for this deck are, is just really minimal. So I just wanted more and as much information that I could get. Um, for us this week. And this is number 44. There, There is so much more than you think. Some people believe they were born to be one thing or another, but others get a sense that there is more to them than just one aspect. Your mind and body are reaching out for new things and exciting experiences now. Guardian spirits are reminding you that you have many undiscovered gifts and now would be a good time to allow them to come forward. It is not a sin to share a precious gift with the world. Remember, there is no such thing as coincidence. The signs that keep turning up in your life are all saying the same thing. It's in you, so go for it. And this kind of, this card and uh, this card together, Reclaim Your Body, kind of encompasses the, the energy that I've been feeling about this eclipse window. The Libra air solar eclipse with a Taurus earth lunar eclipse is balancing the mind and the body. So while this card is talking about using your intuition, connecting to your gifts, and like using them, grabbing hold of them, is this like uh, wisdom, intuitive, psychic air energy that we want to grab onto and pull into our body. Uh, this particular deck has really, really very, very long descriptions for each card. So I'm just going to pull out uh, the key points and then I'm going to post the rest of the information in Discord and on in our Facebook group because there's exercises you can do and the exercise is really beautiful that it teaches like if there's any blocks or that come up in regards to this and it, there's just a lot of information. So I'm going to post the majority of it in our private group. The body as a safe home. It's time to come home. The one place we will always be until the day we die is our body. And unfortunately, most of us are taught that our home is unworthy, ugly, or lacking in some way. Unlearning this and becoming comfortable in our own skin can be a lifelong journey. But there are things that we can do now to feel more at home. The first is to remember that your home can be a place of safety. Having your body as a safe space means that you can feel at home anywhere. This can be tricky because so many women have had the safety of their own skin taken away in various ways. If your body feels unsafe, 
Take this process slow. The second is to begin and accept your body as it is. Culture is cruel to women's body and tells us that we are never good enough. This card invites you to bring awareness to the parts of yourself that struggle that you struggle to accept. Don't force yourself to love everything right away. Just invite in the possibility that those parts you don't love can be accepted. This card also calls you to remember that your body is highly intelligent and holds the key to your healing. It remembers everything you have ever been through. Unprocessed emotions and events can be stuck until they are given space to release. So potential blocks to reclaiming loving your body. Are you stuck in a cycle of hating your body? If so, you are absolutely not alone. This card is an invitation to do a little to be a little more gentle on yourself. Another block might be that you don't feel like you belong in this realm or your body. I relate to this. I relate to this one a lot. Many people have the feeling that this isn't their home and struggle to be in Earth's reality. If this is you, find ways to bring your cosmic or alien world into this one. When you practice grounding in your body, imagine stars or cosmic energy flowing through you. Embody what feels comfortable for you and find ways to integrate it into your earthly shell. The final block is not listening to the needs of your body. In our busy lives, it can be hard to find time to slow down, but remember that you cannot run on empty forever. Take small steps to care for your body now so that you don't have to take drastic measures later. It has a beautiful exercise for connecting to your body but I really do feel that this kind of encompasses the energy, like balancing, like the Libra air wisdom that we got on the solar eclipse and bringing that into our bodies, bringing that wisdom, living that wisdom, being that wisdom and embodying that wisdom is really, I think, kind of the big message for all of us. So I don't want to overload everybody with too much information about the lunar eclipse, especially because it's it's at the it's on Saturday, it's at the end of the week, and you've probably got a lot going on in your regular everyday today life. So it might just be that you flow through this week and then Friday happens, you you shut off work mode and you're like, oh, the lunar eclipse is tomorrow. So no matter how you approach this is going to be the one, the right one that works for you. Even if just watching this video and brings your awareness to it, there's still going to be things that happen on a subconscious level for you. So pick and choose how you want to approach this week. If you're watching this on Sunday, I think that's the best time because you can utilize, you can set your plan on Monday, what, how you want to approach the rest of the week. You got to And then we have that Aries energy that's going to give us the spark and burst of energy to get any major to-dos before the lunar eclipse. And then you can just kind of experience what happens for you. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful, happy week and that you have an even more magical and wonderful lunar eclipse on Saturday. Thanks so much. We'll see you on the other side of the looking glass. the coolest thing I've ever seen. Oh my God. Okay. Whoa. Wow. So I just learned a new, (laughs) a new feature on here. Holy moly. So look on Monday we have